Hi everybody. Next up is updating the settings in the firmware so that our printer is much more accurate and predictable at temperature. We're going to use a program called Pronterface to update those settings. So let's get started. First up, we're just going to search for Pronterface on Google and click through and click to download and we want the Windows and OS X binaries and we want the latest release which is here labeled as print run wind slicer 03 February 2015 so we'll click to download that and once that is finished downloading we're going to unzip it and go into the folder and you'll see pronterface.exe. So we're just gonna double click and open Pronterface. So this is our UI. Now at this point, you wanna have the Select Mini turned on and plugged into your computer via USB. In my case, I have several COM ports that show up because I have other USB Arduino peripherals plugged in you will probably only have one or two. Generally, it's gonna be COM3 or COM5 that the print driver gets mapped to, but you can just click through each of the COM ports and try to connect to them, and whichever one works, works. So we're just gonna leave the default connection speed, press connect. You can say, see here it says printer's now online. Um, down below here and in the graph, I'm getting temperature readouts, so we know that we're connected. So the first thing we need to do is update the PID settings for the hot end. So those are the values, if you will, that tell the firmware how much power to apply, how to apply it, how often to apply it, and how often it kind of updates and checks the temperature. Uh, the values that come in the default firmware are really, really bad. Um, your temperature can swing as much as five or six degrees Celsius, which is gonna result in some pretty poor prints. So fortunately, some other folks have done the hard work for us to get good values that we can go from. So the values we're gonna use come from Michael O'Brien, who's done a tremendous amount of work on Hackaday uh, in investigating the electronics and how the temperature settings are set. If you want to check this out in more detail, you can go and check out his project logs for really in-depth analysis, but we're just going to use the output of that for this video. So click over in the right-hand side of Pronterface in this bottom section, that's our command console for our g-code and we're going to type in the first command to set the values for the hot end itself so m301 is the command to update the pid settings and we're going to use a p of 36.00 an i of 0.012 and a d of 72 a C of 0 0.12 and an L of 2. So hit enter, you'll see the result that comes back where it says OK. And then we're going to do M500, which persists those values to the storage on the device. And next, we are going to update the heated bed. And our P value is going to be P106.56, I0.024, and D of 96.81. And then we're going to run in 500 again. There we go. All our settings are stored. And the way that we can verify that is by typing in M503, and that will read back all of our values. Towards the end, you can see the M301 and M304 values. Those look good. So we're gonna disconnect from the printer. And then I'm gonna manually turn the printer off and back on.
And now we're going to reconnect to the printer and run M503 just to make sure that those settings actually persisted. So there we go. We're good to go with the settings. That's really all we need to use the G-Code console and printer phase for, um, but it's good to have this if you ever want to do manual control of the printer via USB. Although I recommend not using this to actually print from USB because if your printer or if your computer rather ever turns off or restarts, any number of things can happen. If the program crashes, your print's gonna stop. It's just much more reliable to save your G code from Cura to your SD card, put, it, put the SD card in the printer and then print directly from the printer itself. All right, so now we've got those settings updated. So the next thing we're gonna do is install Cura. So let's search for Cura, there we go. And we're gonna download the latest version here. And we're gonna select, I don't wanna share any information so we don't have to fill anything out. And here we go with Cura downloading. So there we have it downloaded. So let's double click to install Cura. I'm just going to use the defaults for everything here and click to install. Okay, and we're going to click to run Cura. So this is the screen that you'll see on first run. Um, so we're gonna click custom and I'm just gonna name this M200. Click add printer. So now that we've gotten the basic printer settings in, we're gonna update the start and end G code. I'm gonna paste in the updated G code that we're going to use. So, especially for the starting G code, this is okay, uh, but we're just going to improve it just a little bit. We're going to add a couple of things to it. So, we're going to start with G21 that just ensures that we're using metric values for everything. Uh, and then the G90 and G82 is what was already there. We're going to start with the fan turned off, make sure that we can get to X and Y home. Then go to Z Home, move the platform down, zero the extruded length, send three millimeters of feed just so that we're priming the extruder, zero it out again, and then we're going to start printing. Uh, for the NG code, we're going to update that as well. Uh, the primary thing that we're going to be updating here is uh, reflecting that this doesn't turn off the fan on the hot end. Um, so pasting in the change to code here, most of it's the same, except we're gonna do a little bit of a retraction to relieve any pressure on, on the nozzle as it cools down. And we're gonna move the Z up a little bit and then retract a little bit more. Uh, and then we have this set G4 setting, which is basically just gonna sleep this NG code script for five minutes, which will give the hot end time to cool down so that then we can issue the command to turn that fan off, which will actually work. Then we'll set to X and Y zero to get everything out of the way, turn the stepper motors off and go back to absolute positioning. So with those, two bits of script set, we're good to go. So we can hit finish. Now we've got our printer in here. So we'll hit close. And as you can see, that printer is selected M200. And for this first print, we're gonna be printing with our PLA. Um, just because the part that we're printing um, 
is actually gonna be the spacer so that we can install the glass bed next onto the printer so that we'll get better prints, especially for ABS. So let's head over to Thingiverse and let's search for select mini spacer. There we go. So we're gonna get the glass bed spacer and hit download and come back over to our downloads folder. Let's extract that. And it will be in the files folder. So there we go. So let's open the spacer. Okay, there we go. Now the, this is the orientation that it will default to. Um, and with Cura, uh, your left mouse button selects objects and moves them. Your right mouse button is what you can use to move around the object, to tumble around it. And if you hold down shift when you right click, you can pan your view around. So as you can see by default, it brings our spacer in in this orientation, uh, but we actually want to lay it down on its side. So we're gonna click the rotate option once we have the part selected. And I'm gonna use the green axis for rotation and click and drag it 90 degrees so that now it's laying on its side. Now the reason for doing this is it's really important to understand the way that 3, 3D printers and especially FDM printers like the Select Mini work. Um, and to really show you how this works, I'm gonna click the view mode over to layers so that we can, we can drill in and see how it's gonna print one layer after the next coming up. So by moving the model into this orientation, we're going to have continuous layers along the axis that we want to be the most strong, um, where the most tension is going to be as we clip it in. That way we don't have to worry nearly as much about the part snapping or breaking or deforming over time as we would if we had oriented the part vertically. Now, the trade-off for this is now we have these gaps. Um, so we need to fill these gaps. Now how do we do that? It's not too hard. So we're going to come over to our print setup here and we're just going to enable support and we're going to leave it set to everywhere. And now when we come in our view mode, we come back over to layers. Now you can see that it's actually giving us support structure to fill in those gaps. And this will come out really easily um, Cura takes care of the spacing and everything so that that support structure will just snap out when we finish the part. So next step, setting layer height. I'm just going to set it to 0.2 millimeters. We don't need 0.1 for a mechanical part like this. Uh, wall thickness, I like to set to 1.2 because our nozzle is 0.4 millimeters wide. 1.2 will give you an exact multiplier, so that means three wall perimeters to round the part if it's thick enough to do that. I find that three perimeters in almost every case will give you a much stronger, better part than two. It generally means you're gonna take a little bit longer to print, but you'll get a better surface finish on the outside and it'll be a stronger part. So for infill, for this part, I'm actually gonna bump it up to 50%, although I don't think it's gonna make any difference, frankly. Um, because there's so little infill space for material. I'm just gonna leave this at the defaults for 200 degrees Celsius with a 60 degrees Celsius build plate temperature. For the diameter of the filament, we need to make sure we change this to be 1.75 millimeters. Um, it will default to that 2.85 because that's what comes with the Ultimaker, which is what this Cura software is geared towards. If we don't change that here, 
you'll get a really strange looking print the first time you, you try to print. For speed, I'm actually gonna lower this down to 50 millimeters per second and travel speed to 100 millimeters per second. For cooling, we're gonna leave print cooling enabled, so leave that box checked. Bill plate adhesion, um, I'm gonna leave it at No, I don't know that we need pill plate adhesion um, because this is PLA and we're going to have this thing dialed in. So I'm just going to set it to, to give me a skirt. So the three types of adhesion are skirt, which really isn't an adhesion type at all. What that does is just give you a couple of layers around the outside of the part. Again, basically just there to prime the extruder and get out any you know, extra pieces of mess that may have accumulated from the last print or while it's doing its initial extrusion before it starts. But it's not touching the part at all. If we set a brim, as you can see, what that does is actually kind of like a skirt, except it draws all the way in and touches the first layer of the part. Um, for ABS, this will give you great, great solid bed adhesion. You don't have to worry about your first layers warping and curling up. Um, the downside to using a full brim like this is after your print is finished, sometimes you might get lucky and be able to pull the brim layer off, but I find almost every time I have to come back with an X-Acto knife and actually trim this side of the part back to flush. The last option is to actually print a raft. Um, so what a raft does, as you can see, is it actually prints several layers up from the bed and then build your part on top of those layers. And you can see it uses a huge amount of space around the part. This is pretty much only used for ABS and is really only as a last resort. Um, you can be sure that if you use a raft, your part is not gonna curl. Um, it's not going to warp off the bed, but it uses a ton of material, takes a long time to print the raft, and if you have everything else dialed in, you generally don't need it. But again, both of those are really only for ABS. Since we're printing with PLA, don't really have to worry about it here. So we've got everything set. I'm actually going to pop the SD card out of the printer and put it in to my SD card reader. There we go. And you can see that when I put that in, it will automatically come up and say, do you want to save this to removable drive? So I'll say save to removable drive. And you can see that it saved it as MP Select Mini Glass Spacer G code. So we're good to go. So now I'm going to pull the, well, first I'm actually going to hit eject. That will take care of the USB um, unmounting for that drive and pull the SD card out and put it back in the printer. And now we can get started printing. So onto the print. 